Feathered serpent. Captain's log, stardate 5097.3. Starfleet reports major military activity in the Klingon sector near Krakur, a planet on the edge of Klingon space. Intelligence indicates that the Klingons are mobilizing a large fleet to search for a renegade who is responsible for a disruption of unknown nature on that planet. Federation sensors have found a faint energy trail leading to the planet Zam-4 in the Digifal system. We have been ordered by Starfleet to track down the source of the energy and discover what happened on Frakur before the Klingon fleet enters Federation space. If we are not successful, the Federation and the Klingon Empire may find themselves at war once again. Nothing to report, Captain. in Klingon space, which has belonged to the Empire for at least four generations, governed by the Kenka family. The population of Krakur is not known. Kenka, Vlicht. A member of the Kenka family, an old Klingonese family of noble origins, the governing family of Krakur. Vlicht is the first Kenka to reach flag rank and as such, has been posted back away from the frontier. Licht has two sons in the service, but nothing is known of his wife or other children. He is believed to be the current commander of the Klerta and one of the most respected commanders in the Klingon fleet. He is said to be an avid fencer. Klingons, a humanoid life form that has used genetic manipulation to stratify their population. Their home world is Kling. Klingon's culture is based on the principle of survival of the fittest, either through guile or physical force. Principles of honor are used to prevent the culture from killing itself completely. But these principles are extended outside their species only to non-Klingons who have proved themselves in battle. Negotiations over planets in the disputed area have been slowly advancing. Hindered by recent Klingon technological exchanges with the Romulans, the Klingon Empire itself is economically backward and poorly organized, but their military force is extremely formidable. Romulans, a race descended from Vulcan stock, but one that did not reject aggression as the Vulcans did. On a sensor, the two races appear very similar. Their individuals are known for being more passionate and emotional than their Vulcan counterparts. They currently use ships of Klingon design, suggesting to some the Klingons are maintaining them as a client state to antagonize the Federation in a move that circumvents the Organian Peace Treaty. Organian Treaty, a peace treaty between Klingons and the Federation, inspired by the Organians. The Organians have enough power to stop all starships everywhere, so the peace will be maintained de facto, whether anyone wants it or not. Organians, a race of transhumanoid beings that can manifest themselves in many forms. The Organians are a race of extraordinary power and wisdom. Organian intervention in the Klingon Federation War resulted in the Organian Peace Treaty which settles border disputes between the two cultures. Zam4, the third planet in the Digifall system, a Class M world, see Digifall. Digifall, a system near the Klingon neutral zone. Digifal contains two habitable planets, Digifal 3 and Digifal 4. Digifal 3, also known as Zem 4, contains ruins of a civilization that abandoned the planet approximately 20,000 years ago and has been declared a protected world for archaeological reasons. Arming weapons. Disarming weapons.
Captain. A Klingon battle cruiser has entered the system. Open hailing frequencies. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Klingon battle cruiser, you are in Federation space. You must leave immediately. I am Commander Taras of the Nizva. We are in pursuit of a genocidal criminal. We are performing an act of mercy in removing him from your space. Naturally, you will remove your vessel from this system. For your own safety, of course. I think we can take care of ourselves, Taraz, which is more than I can say for you, if the Nisra does not leave Federation space at once. You are in direct violation of the Organian Treaty, mister. If you have a problem, have your fleet commander take it up with them. If a Federation criminal were to pass into Klingon space, you'd be saying the same thing to me. Who do you think you're trying to fool, Taraz? Get your ship out of here now. I think we... You are in direct violation of the Organian Treaty, mister. If you have a problem, have your fleet commander take it up with them. If a Federation criminal were to pass into Klingon space, you'd be saying the same thing to me. If we are not allowed to capture this criminal captain, you may do this for us. We insist that we remain here to monitor the situation, but we will take no action, provided that you can bring him to us in 12 hours. Agreed. Vessels of war are not allowed in Federation space. You will pull back to the Arganian neutral zone and do so immediately. Agreed. Entering standard orbit. Assemble a landing party. Unless we find the so-called criminal, we're going to war. You are James Tiberius Kirk, captain of the USS Enterprise. McCoy is fidgeting around. Lieutenant Strage is carefully eyeing the humanoid. Spock is analyzing the surroundings. The moon of Digifall. Legend says that the gods of good and evil fortune live there and will glance back at those who look at them, and either a miracle or a catastrophe will soon befall those who gaze upon it. There is a tall, slender, dark-haired man looking intently at you. Feral red eyes glare out of the dark at you. Luminescent insects swarm near a large tree. You see dense vegetation in all directions. He doesn't seem to be in a talkative mood right now. Jim, that man is dressed in ancient Aztec clothing. I believe you are mistaken, Doctor. His clothing bears a distinct resemblance to fashions of a much later period. I'm just a security officer, sir. The humanoid's adornments appear similar to those worn by leaders of Earth's early 20th century inhabitants of the South American continent. What do you know about Earth culture? He looks like an ancient Aztec. I am picking up strange energy readings from the alien. Perhaps Dr. McCoy could provide better data. He appears human. All life signs are normal, but I'm getting strange energy readings near the base of the pituitary gland. Greetings, my children. I can barely imagine that you have come so far. I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Did you know the Klingons are looking for you? I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What did you do to get the Klingons so upset? We are not your children, and we don't appreciate this wild goose chase you forced us into. I am, Cap I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What did you do to get the Klingons so upset? Quint expression. I have done nothing to anger them. I did with them what I have done with everyone. And exactly what would you have done with them? Entering Klingon space for anything puts the peace in peril. 
Whatever you did has them very upset. They're raiding worlds looking for you. And exactly what would you have done with them? Entering Klingon space for anything puts the peace in peril. Jeopardize the peace? Hardly. Peace is what I preach. I am Quetzalcoatl, as you well know from the proud history of your world. Quetzalcoatl? How fitting you would name yourself after one of the most bloody-handed gods in Earth's history. Bloody-handed? My people love peace. Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you left, offering you their still-beating hearts. Ha! You mean your followers love pieces? They slaughtered other believers hoping you'd return. Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you left, offering you their still-beating hearts. Impossible! You must be lying! And then your followers were destroyed, because when white men arrived on that continent, they were believed to be you in your promised return. Your people perverted your teachings, then were destroyed by it. Foul, lying creatures! My gift was wasted upon you! Be gone! Here we are not the inheritors of the noble Aztec world. What you have said has greatly disturbed me. You should not lie so. You shall remain here until you have learned the error of angering Quetzalcoatl. You are in a deep pit. It is a long, hard climb to the top. There is a vine hanging down into the pit. Lieutenant Strage is carefully examining the pit. This particular snake doesn't seem to like your company and moves whenever you get near it. There are rocks here quite suitable for picking up and throwing. James T. Kirk does not seem very happy with his current predicament. Spock is carefully examining the pit. McCoy is examining the floor of the pit. There is a light suspended from above by a chain. He doesn't seem to be in a talkative mood right now. He doesn't seem to... No enemies in sight, but supplies could be a problem if we don't get out. Those vines would be useful to escape, if we could reach them. Do I look like Houdini to you? I'm afraid you're going to have to pull the rabbit out of the hat on this one. You pick up some rocks from the pile. Hey, what was that for? Thank you, Captain, but I assure you that I was giving this situation my fullest attention. I'm glad I was taught pain nullification techniques. This snake is just waiting for a chance to sink its fangs into someone, especially young Starfleet security officers. <laughs> 